Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship for Sunday, April the 30th, 2023 from Charleswood United Church in Winnipeg. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm being joined and aided by Benjamin and together it is our great delight to offer you this time of prayer, praise and reflection on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. I remind us that Charleswood United Church and the land I am standing on is Treaty One land the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, and Dene people, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are a community committed to a future of right relations and reconciliation. It was Earth Day this past week, and we're going to spend a little bit time reflecting on that. And for a text to aid in our reflections on Earth Day, how the Earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, how everything in creation was so very, very good. I've chosen as a text Psalm 23. The ancient poetry of Israel offers us a glimpse of images that include still waters as ways of reminding us of God's presence in the beauty of creation and our responsibility to treat it as God's creation for we are created along with it. We're delighted that you have joined us. We hope you enjoy this time of reflection. Come, let us worship God together. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. Praise the Lord with the harp and lute. Praise the Lord with the gentle sounding Praise the Lord in the field and forest. Praise the Lord in the city square. Praise the Lord anytime and anywhere. Praise the Lord in the wind and sunshine. Praise the Lord in the dark of night. Praise the Lord in the rain or snow or in the morning light. Praise the Lord in the deepest valley. Praise the Lord on the highest hill. Praise the Lord never let your Praise the Lord with the crashing cymbal. Praise the Lord with the pipe and string. Praise the Lord with the joyful songs you sing. Praise the Lord on a weekday morning. Praise the Lord on a Sunday noon. Praise the Lord by the light of sun or moon. Destroy. Praise the Lord in the peace and quiet. Praise the Lord in your work or play. Praise the Lord everywhere in every way. A reading from the Old Testament from the book of Psalms, Psalm 23. Let us listen for the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, restores my soul, leads me in paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of my God forever. Amen. sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to to prove my 
Savior lives, because He lives. He lives. I can face lives. tomorrow. I can face tomorrow. Because He lives. Because He lives. All fear is gone. last week. And as is the case almost every year, when Earth Day approaches and passes, I remember my favorite personal Earth Day story. And I want to share it with you. And I tell you that even though this story is something that happened a long time ago, over 30 years, I remember it most clearly. I am hoping that some people who are watching this online service from Western Manitoba and from the community of Minneota in particular might reach out to me and tell me that they remember it just as I have told it. But again, my memory of it is very clear. In the late 80s and early 90s, I was the minister of Bertel Isabella Minneota Pastoral Charge in Western Manitoba. It is three small communities, rural farming based communities. My office was in the church at Bertel United, and the manse in which we lived was in the town of Bertel. And so I thought it important to be present on a regular basis in Minneota and Isabella. And because there was an office in the church at Minneota, I just committed myself to saying one day a week, or choose a day a week, I would always go and work out of Minneota. Now, on many occasions. There were hospital visits to make or homes to visit and, 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 and farms to, to go and visit members of the church at, or possibly I was planning a funeral or making some arrangements for some other event. On, on, on more than a few occasions, on, on many occasions, there was less to do, and, and I might have I would have reached out to someone from the church in Minneota, and I would say, I'm coming to, I'm coming to Minneota on, on, on Wednesday, and I'd say to my old dear friends, Kay or Donna or Dorothy, maybe you could make a few phone calls and we could have a bridge game, and I could get four visits in uh, all at once, and, and uh, some delightful afternoons were spent that way. Well, on one occasion, Earth Day, was drawing near, and someone told me that there's going to be an Earth Day assembly at Minneota School, and I was welcome to attend. Well, this is exactly the thing that I loved 
to do. And so I, I, I was there early and I went to the school and I said hi to the people that I knew and I took a seat. It was one of those school assemblies where every class had prepared something for the particular occasion. And the grade two class came up when it was their turn and they had prepared a song. It was one of those songs you often do in elementary school where you take a tune that you already know that the kids already know. In this case, it was, um, they'll be coming round the mountain. And then to teach something, you have the children write new words for that song using that tune. And so this was all on the Earth Day theme, the things that we could do, the suggestions the kids had to make about how we could treat the Earth better. And so a class, large class of beaming grade two kids got up in front of the uh, audience at the, at, the, at the one end of the gym, and they began to sing. And I swear to you, this was one of the verses. Let's use bullets to kill gophers instead of poison. Let's use bullets to kill gophers instead of poison. Let's use bullets to kill gophers. Let's use bullets to kill gophers. Let's use bullets to kill gophers instead of poison. <laughs> it was absolutely beautiful. It was unbelievably sincere. And it was incredibly memorable. I just delighted in it and I was talking to the other people afterwards about how good that was and when I left Minneota that day I told others about what I had experienced. And one of the things that eventually dawned on me is just how much I don't know about an issue like caring for the planet changes based on where you live and what you do and how your community is shaped. One of the reasons, in addition to how incredibly uh, beautiful and charming it was to listen to these children, was this isn't a thought that had ever occurred to me. That if there was a problem, there was a solution, even if that solution wasn't something that ever came to my mind. You know, over the course of the five years that I was living in a rural community and getting to know people, for whom farming was the essential um, basis for family life and community life and church life, that there were all kinds of things that I didn't even know I didn't know. And it was among those people in those communities that I learned more, if I knew anything, about water tables and wildlife conservation and soil erosion and many more subjects. It was Earth Day last week, and I don't think any of us need to be told that caring for creation in this time of climate change is something that is of the highest, of the utmost importance. And I would think that all of us have stories that we can tell that remind us we have lived through things that and sure, we need to take a positive role in, in caring for creation and, and working for Earth's well-being. Probably because it was Earth Day, I found that I came across one particular story a couple of times in a couple of different places in this past week. And it was about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And the pictures are haunting and disturbing of an aggregation of discarded waste, mostly plastics, that are kind of brought together by the currents that run around the, the northern Pacific Ocean and keep them in place and keep them, keep them in place and keep this, this debris bound. But it's, it's massive and a problem that nobody is really dealing with or even knows how to to deal with it. There isn't a lot that people of faith inherently know about how to resolve the climate crisis or the question of pollution, of how to 
address all the issues of Earth Day. This is an issue that all humanity must share together, of course. But I think there is something from our tradition, from our custom, from our spiritual ancestors that we can offer. And it has to do with the idea that creation or nature is inherently good. In the very first story in Scripture, the story of creation in Genesis chapter 1, on each day of creation, as something more is added to the living organism that is the earth, God stops and God says, it is good. Good. Morally good. The way we remember that in that children's table grace, God is great, God is good, we are actually saying two things. God is great reminds us that God is worthy of praise and is powerful, is beyond us, is awe-inspiring. But that God is good is just not another way of saying God is great. God is good, is, is, is morally good, is inherently good. And of course, in the stories of Jesus, we will refer to that as loving, that God is love. In the story of creation in Genesis 1, the human beings are made as part of creation, not separate from, just another element of creation that is added to that which God has already created, and in everything God says, it is good. That idea that creation, that nature, that the world around us is inherently good, morally good, is something that echoes throughout Scripture, and especially in the Old Testament. And perhaps it is because they were something of a pre-modern people or pre-industrialized people. They understood in their day-to-day -day living that we have to treat creation well. And if we do so, it in turn treats us well, for we are more than just connected. We are interdependent. I find echoes of that in the most familiar, most memorized, most well-known verse in the Old Testament, verses in the Old Testament, which of course is Psalm 23. Nothing, nothing else even comes close. We know it so well that we think we understand it without even recognizing that in Psalm 23 is this idea that creation, nature, is inherently good and we have to care for it and it treats us well. But that it is a psalm or a song or a poem, whichever way you want to refer to it, of two halves. It says two things about God. The two things Psalm 23 says about God is that God is a good shepherd and that God is a gracious host. And those are two separate things, and it's left to us to understand the connection between God as the good shepherd and God as the gracious host. God is the good shepherd. Psalm 23 begins, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the imagery that is chosen. And what makes a good shepherd? Well, that we are led to green pastures and beside still waters and on paths of righteousness. This may be 3,000 years old, but isn't it interesting, fascinating, that our spiritual ancestors 3,000 years ago on the other side of the earth in an entirely different climate, an entirely different culture, nevertheless know exactly what you and I know, the serenity that comes to us when we sit beside still waters that has not changed through all of history and it never will, or the peace that comes from recognizing the beauty of green pastures. The second part of Psalm 23, though, shifts. God is no longer a good shepherd, but a gracious host. Not called a gracious host, but a good shepherd doesn't set a table for us in the presence of our enemies. A gracious host does. Or anoint our head with oil, a sign of our welcome, a sign of our blessing. Or, or pour the cup that overflows, that 
idea of abundance. That, that's the graciousness that God, when God is the host, there is enough and more than enough, our cup overflows. The bridge between the two halves, of course, and the, and the steady thread that connects the two halves is the idea of God who is our companion. As gentle shepherd, God is our companion. As gracious host, God is our companion. God is both of those things. But even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. Israel loved Psalm 23 so much that it took imagery with which it was already familiar and then used it over and over and over again so that the early Christian church, so aware of their Jewish roots and their an and Jewish ancestry, continued to, to, use that, to use that imagery. God is the good shepherd and we as the sheep is something that finds expression in a number of stories. You may remember that in the story of the Exodus, the tenth plague is going to fall over the entire land. And God gives instructions that if they would take a lamb and if they would prepare the lamb in a certain way, according to the ordinances of God, that the disaster, the plague that was coming would pass over those houses. The early church saw something, recognized something in their experience of Jesus, and in particular the death of Jesus, that made them recognize, that made them refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God. They saw in Jesus what Judaism saw in that Passover meal that is still remembered each year to this day. They saw a death that leads to life, that understanding of sheep and shepherd, that goodness of creation that God provides is all interwoven, all interconnected. The Gospel of John is the only place where we find Jesus referred to as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It is a reference to the Passover story, but it's also saying something new. And ironically, paradoxically, in so taking that story and shifting it and, 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 and making that connection, Jesus somehow is at the same time with equal weight, the shepherd and the lamb. A paradox that United Church hymn writer, the late Sylvia Dunstan picked up on and, and wrote about in her hymn, You Lord are both lamb and shepherd. It was Earth Day last week. You can't look into Scripture and Scripture alone and find what it is that we must do. But we can look to Scripture and to the elements of our spiritual ancestors and recognize that one thing we can offer to the conversation is a reminder of the goodness of the earth, the blessing that we have received and our need to treat the earth well and that if we do so, it in turn treats us well. Not exactly sure what can be done about the great Pacific garbage patch. Those stories I mentioned said that it was at times the size of Texas and that the idea of simply trawling it, of gathering up that which has been dumped, the debris which is polluting the North Pacific Ocean, is not something anybody wants to take on. It's probably not attainable. It's also in international water, so nobody sees that they have the responsibility to, to do so and to assume the cost. Caring for creation is a very complicated issue. But we can remember one thing, that in another story, in which the idea of shepherd and lamb is lifted up, 
Complications are set aside if we will embrace grace. Jesus tells the parable of a shepherd who had a hundred sheep and only one got lost. And so he leaves the 99 and pursues the one and he is relentless until he finds the one. And when he finds the one, he lifts it up, does not scold it, does not punish it. He lifts it up and places it on his shoulders and he brings it back and he celebrates, saying to his friends and neighbors, come and share with me for what was lost is found. We need to find our way led perhaps by the understanding of Jesus as a gentle shepherd who reminds us over and over again in story and in example of the goodness of the earth that was his spiritual inheritance. The goodness of the earth. And that if we will live by mercy and by grace and be as relentless and pursue the outcomes that we need, as surely as the shepherd goes after the one sheep, then we will begin to change, to transform the situation the earth finds itself in. All we need to do is remember and be thankful and do what we can, or at the very least, please, let's use bullets to kill gophers instead of poison? Amen. Who is the one to whom you belong? Who in your weakness has made you strong? Let us unite our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. Gentle shepherd, our guide, our protector, we who would follow in your path 
of righteousness, praise you for the goodness that surrounds us, the deep well of grace and beauty from which we draw sustenance. We thank you for the nurture we find in green pastures and the serenity we experience in still waters. Holy Companion, we thank you for the blessing of the Spirit who never abandons us, who will not leave our side even in the darkest valley. In your presence we are never alone, never forsaken, never without hope. Creator of all life, we thank you for the wonder that is our earthly home. We celebrate the inherent goodness of air, land, and water in their original, natural, and pristine states. As human activity and neglect degrade the elements, renew our minds and hearts to return to the blueprint for creation we find in you. Heavenly host, you welcome us and set a table for us in the presence of our enemies, whatever form that enemy might take. You bless us with prayer as a means of returning to your intent for our lives. So it is we pray for our sisters and brothers who are confronting forces that oppose your will in our living. We pray for your children who live in the ruins of scorched earth and contaminated water brought on by warfare and violence. We especially remember the people of Sudan in this moment of crisis, created by greed and self-interest. May Sudan reverse course on this road to decay and destruction. We pray for those of our community who need your protection from the curse of illness that has presented itself before them. We pray for our sisters and brothers who are in hospital, who are ailing at home, who find themselves in a moment of transition. May their cup overflow with mercy and peace. Hear the prayers of your people who desire nothing less and nothing more than to live in the house of the Lord. These things we pray in the name of the one who is at all times our good shepherd, Jesus the Christ, the living one, who is with us and leads us when we pray together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us as we have reflected on Psalm 23 and remembered all the bounty and blessings of the earth. In the week that is to come, may the Spirit be known to you and be your companion and guide. For now, be well, be safe, and be hopeful. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs
Oh, 